Hello and welcome to Lord Lucan. It's time to chuck a bit of caution at the wind as we're back for more Love After Lockup. In this episode, we've got the return of these two. So, I have to tell you some news. What? Then Montana Mills shows us that he's still got game. Look, tic tac toe. Discount Kira Knightley needs to get it on. I need to get on it. And find out what all this is about. Howdy Padre, welcome to the channel. And a big huge thank you to those who have subscribed, you beautiful people. And a wee drama the old faithful for the members of the Lucan Manor. Comment of the episode, last episode, not the catchiest of names, was Habby's humour. And she said, repeat after me. I do not need to fat shame to be funny. I do not need to fat shame to be etc etc etc. Yes, you are right, Habby. I was a very naughty sausage and will flatulate myself thoroughly. First up on our tour today is the Millses. Over in the island they call Road, and Millsy is trying to sound exciting. Look, tic tac toe. Yeah, tic tac toe. Great. He's probably got kaplunk and ball in a cup too. But don't worry, it's non stop funorama around here today. Even Sultana is doing some kind of, you know, sporty thing. Because you almost just hit him in the head. Oops, I <laughs> nearly. Have another go, Sultana. Maybe you'll get her next time. But there's skills flying about all over the place as Mills Jr. takes to the felt. Oh, yes, Perso Pride right there. There's something about Michael that seems a little more chill this season. He's carrying a more laid back vibe. I think he's embraced the grey bits and has taken on the role of Papa Mills. This is what I've been yearning for. Yeah, he's really missed sitting around watching his kids be crap and stuff. And who can get bored of that? Yay! <laughs> and it's all lovely till someone goes and says... Spit that, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> oh dear, a bit of the old talk to you for a second. Always a cause for a wee bit of concern, but it's all fine. She's just worried about the move to Las Vegas. So Millsy slips into his monotone thing that he does and says something about blah blah music career into a wall, blah blah loads of money in rap, and all his daughter wants is I just want to be kept in the loop. Yeah, well, you know, don't reassure her too quickly there, Millsy, but he thinks he had a real heart to heart moment, so he gives her a compassionate poke in the eye. Nice. And tells her not to cry. Don't cry. Uh, well, well, she wasn't really. But that doesn't stop Millsy when he's in full on daddy mode. So he proceeds to wipe away those non existent tears. I just want you to keep this between us. Yep. Yeah, good daddying, Millsy. It all must be going okay, though, because he's wearing these thousand dollar trainers. <laughs> yeah, does Maserati know you're still doing that? After all, you know, that cease and desist stuff that no one knows about. <laughs> anyway, he's got one more line for the road. You can count on me for anything, anything you need. Yeah, as long as it doesn't include, you know, being there or something, then it's all fine. So it looks like WeTV's hinting at a couple of storylines till something better comes up. So while they do that, let's go to Iwileka to see what Discount Kira Knightley and Jeffrey Dahmer are up to. And the whole, ooh look, it's Lindsay the gangster thing is really cringy to me. And I was gonna leave it, but then this happens. I fronted you two years ago. Pause. Okay, I'm close to calling a bit of BS on this bit of creative license going on, you know? What's he supposed to be? First of all, they've dressed him up like a generic reality TV interview shirt thing. And that hair definitely does look a bit wiggy to me. And they've totally nicked one of Gino's hats. I bet it's just Jeffrey, isn't it? That have distorted his voice so you don't tell it's him. Otherwise it'd be all, Hey Lindsay, can I have my PlayStation back now? Jeffy, you idiot, why I order? Then he goes back to badass discount Kira. You should put that money on my books. She put that money on my books. She did that accent. I cringed into the back of my chair and then... You got my money? Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> oh my god. That had all the quality of a high school production of Homeo and Fouliette. And whoever gives anyone money like this? Here you go. Not at all directed so we could all see that clearly from where the camera is stashed. Let me count it. Yeah, well I'd probably count it again after she's had her pause on it. 
So Discount Kiro makes it clear that she's back and she's bad. Put the word out. I'm collecting my money. Ooh, now we're scary. And Kira and her backup dancer aren't to be messed with. They're on a mission to keep Kira out of the clink and the clock is ticking. It's not gonna be pretty if I have to come to them. It won't be pretty at all. Well, yeah, I imagine that's a given. She's a bit like Lindsay's country version of Flavor Flav, being a hype woman. So the mystery debtor leaves. Balins are playing. Next up, look who it is. It's Shawnee Poo and Sarah. Woohoo, I love these two. If you haven't seen it, check out the live stream where we play newlyweds together. Anyway, I see Sean's moustache is still unsure whether it wanted to take part or not. So let's sort that out, shall we? There we go. Much better. So, what's happening today, guys? So, I have to tell you some news. What? Oh, but don't worry, news fans. It's just that she's off parole now and they can travel freely. You know, just in case they want to. They can go to Mexico so I can get a BBL next. What is a BBL? Surely he knows what a BBL is. Uh, some kind of sandwich? So, after the booby work she had done last year, Sarah has her sights set on another part of her body, but Shawnee Poo is suffering a little below the belt and neglect, and just wants to enjoy the wife he has. You keep adding to it, but right when you get well, oh, let's do something else. Unfortunately, Shawnee is stuck in old newsland, and suggests that the surgery is a low-key way of getting things that have harmed her in the past. My god, are you kidding me. No, no, sensitivity has always been strong with this one, you know. So they end the bit with some suspense. I guess until I'm proven wrong again, I can trust her for now. Nothing like a bit of solidarity from old Shawnee Poo. If I was there, I'd show Sarah how solid my darity was too. <laughs> Anyways, enough of that. Let's go and tamper with a Florida man. The Florida man they call Big Deal Rapper and other less flattering things. It's Cameron and Harris. And, apparently, it's the day after the Super Duper video shoot. Professor Cam is noticing something in the air. Something wrong, your man? No, I'm just hope. Yeah, well, you know, that's okay then. Glad it's nothing serious. So the passive aggressive begins, and OG Apology thinks he knows what might be wrong with his long suffering partner. I apologize if I was being rude or snappy yesterday. I was busy, I had a lot of things on my plate. Yeah, I think it was more the ladies flapping their bums about the place that was the problem. But with a mix of self-awareness and denial all at once, he blamed the whole thing on that pesky OG Cam guy. I wasn't Cameron yesterday, I was my product yesterday, I was OG Cam yesterday, so... <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, okay. The character you created, therefore doing what you want, getting your butt into trouble, but totally not of your responsibility. And does he feel bad about it? I feel bad about it. No, not really, but don't worry, it's Omen fans. OG Casanova is a big idea up his little sleeve. So, I'm gonna make it up to you. So I got a surprise for you. Ooh, a surprise. Is it her turn to jiggle about on stage with a performer of her choice? Maybe spend a few grand on her ego too? Or maybe he's got one of those TV chefs, like the one the network totally didn't supply last time. Well, it's none of the above. OG Compassion has taken them to Jism Studios. Nice. So, Jism stands for, yes, I shoot models. Pfft, what a crappy name. It's like a creepy flex to easily impressed men. When you're a photographer, Neanderthal men always ask, do you shoot models? Drooling slightly. And even when you do, it's not the corn on the cob scene they imagined it might be. It's a tough old job, you know. Anyway, it's over to Jism Studios, and they photograph all kinds of stuff, you know. Products, Polaroids, plants, and a poo- Um, well, um, well, now I can see why Cam was attracted to this place. So it's Aris's maternity shoot, and suddenly all is forgiven. We got, we got some more building to do. It's only been a year. Yeah, it's only take a year to, you know, not change at all. Good job, OG Wow. Anyway, for a- For a small- $500 fee. Which means he got the gold plan. Did they need 11 hours? Plus, I bet you have to pay for the print separately. Maybe like this one. Well, $500 and he still looks like someone put Suge Knight in a dryer that was set too high. Or like the Seven Dwarfs got a new inclusive character called Pimpy. Right, let's leave them to it and take a trip to the Marietta Gah to see flashback Rachel and mastermind Lewis. And here's the highlights. Back over to Tsunami and Red Flag. Here I am. Good. Back over to the Millses, and it's time for the gender reveal. And Millses and his sister has chucked together a swanky do. You know, the sister that Juju loves. But all that is now part of the dim and distant last season. 
And there's nothing like doing something for free to get Juju back on side. Is it really nice? You like it? You yes. like it? It came on really nice. Yeah, nice one. I uh, particularly like all that space. Oh, they probably got similar numbers on the doors as a Montana Mills gig. Next to arrive is another Mills member. And this happens. Damn, bro. Nice city. Yeah. Mmm. A brand that hasn't been blurred out or covered with black tape. And they make sure to draw everyone's attention to it. Nice city. I smell a product deal. Although the internet tells me that EXO is also a K-pop thing. Yeah, look at all those virile young men. Well, well, maybe not this one. When you were a kid, did you ever squish in a doll's face and let it inflate again? You know, just saying. Maybe Mills is planning to leave the mean streets of rap for the candy land of K-pop. Alright, are you guys ready to find out the gender? Yeah! Yeah, I'll talk a bit of crap about these guys, but I genuinely wish them love, you know. But shh, don't tell them that. What do you make of these two? Lovable rogues or cheap scammers? Let me know in the comments. I'm so ready to find out the gender of the baby. Um, are we not gonna mention this little fiasco? I'm guessing there's a payer for the end, but right now it looks like Gimp's RS have branched out to gender reveals weddings and bar mitzvahs. But it's not all totally strange. It's a Gimp off, and the winner will be the colour associated with the gender. And we'll be back to find out later on. Meanwhile, over at Jeffrey and Discount Kira's house, Jeffrey is off to work, but not before he sneaks in a quick donkey punch. Be good, have a good day. <laughs> good job, Jeffrey. Back with flashback Rachel, that nice but dim. And it's hard on his mum Donna to adjust to say goodbye to her son again. Are you taking anything that reminds you of me? Yeah, it's right here in my heart. <laughs> yeah, turn it in. Not even Donna is convinced by that little pile of jobby, mister. But this story is all a bit meh, really. And no one trusts Louis to leave the house unsupervised in case he falls into a ditch or some handcuffs or, you know, a vagina on the way. That way I know that Louis isn't gonna get into any trouble. Let's go back to good old Shorty Poo and Sarah in Ohio. And the thing I love about this segment is the banana flying into shot every now and then. I caused the fiasco. Now, what's going on with Sarah's back? She sat down very awkwardly earlier and now she's standing with her legs bent. And it looks like she's wearing a kind of brace. Turns out she had a tummy tuck too. And that's why she's been walking like a thunderbird this season. And it was like a setback. And just as Shorty thought it was safe to go back into the water, he gets a call from his ex. So, I need you to send me some money. Oh, now there's a whole backstory here with Shawnee's other family, but I'm not going to go into it in this episode. However, Kelly has some expenses coming up and she needs a few dollars to help with them. How much are you trying to get? I don't know, like a couple grand? Oh dear. With the new tow truck business getting off the ground, Sarah's booby boost and tummy tidy, plus leaving his job. Right now, poor old Shawnee Poo is just feeling like he's way in over his head. Right now I just feel way in over my head. Right, enough stalling, let's go see what's happening with the Millses. And when we saw them last, the Gimp Gladiators were about to reveal the child's gender. So bait your breath, ladies and gentlemen. Here it comes. <laughs> well, there you have it. The next Mills will be a little lady person. Bless. But there is one little elephant in the room, and that's the fact that... The fact that we haven't told them about the move to Vegas yet. Yeah, it'll be fine. Other things that'll be fine include Tsunami and Red Flag, who are enjoying a delightful date night, or a date day, really. What do I need to... You need to stop messaging girls! <sighs> ah, oh dear. It seems like the dewy morning has got a little sting in it today. And it appears that old Red Flag has been up to his old tricks again. But what excuse does he go for? I asked you about that bitch, and he said, no, I didn't message her, I didn't message her. Because I knew you would trip off of nothing. <laughs> ah, that old chestnut of an excuse. I didn't tell you I'd done that thing I shouldn't have done, because you'd be annoyed at me for doing the thing I shouldn't have done. Genius. But all this adultery, daddying, and dating is all a bit much for poor old Red Flag. That's like loads to do and everything. I don't know if I could just keep doing this. Well, it must be really hard for you. But, you know, here's an idea. How about you just stop doing it? Crazy, I know. <laughs> Such maverick thinking. So, Red leaves the house to call up some rich tea and sympathy from a friend called Casey. Casey is just my friend. I've been knowing her for a long time. Yeah, he's been knowing her ass off for years. And then he decides to reveal the truth behind his trip back home to see his family. I'm finna fly out there Monday, though. Give a 
And I'm linking up with you. We're going to kick it, man. Yeah, a bit of kicking it and chill, perhaps. But it's all fine because... She's just a friend. She's just a really good friend. <laughs> oh, it'll be fine. Back inside, and it's a battle of whom did most for whom. I hate when people bring up what they did for you. Yeah, it must be really annoying being reminded of that 40 grand she gave you. Maybe she slept with those three guys for you too. How thoughtful. But it's looking like the relationship is past its expiration date. And Tsunami is wondering... How do you get through to somebody like that? The hammer, maybe? Or a wrecking ball? I got it like a wrecking ball! But it'll be fine, because I'm sure he's got nothing to hide. Hiding anything? No, I'm not hiding nothing. I'm hiding something. And there you have it, my beautiful viewer. That was episode, uh, I don't know, something or other. It was a little shorter than normal because the episode was a bit devoid of fun. But thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to see you as always. If you liked the video, then why not give a little like, a sub, or check out one of these little doozies. So until I see you again, stay beautiful. Love to my three. You take care of yourself.